Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Jerry Tan, and today, a lot of my patients are questioning how bad is this surge of the Delta variant, and how best to protect myself from the surge of the Delta variant. So let's review the data and watch this. like my videos please click like and subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will be notified for any updated uploads in the future right now all eyes are all delta variant that is now considered the dominant variant all over the world as new covid-19 cases rise week to week and this variant first identified in India, also known as B1.617.2, accounts for a growing share. But looking at the trends from Israel and United Kingdom, it actually presents hope for a less deadly and severe surge of the Delta variant. For example, in Israel, despite the rise of the Delta variant, which now accounts for the, more than 90% of the new cases in the country, you can clearly see from their data that the average daily deaths have been consistently low. So in fact, the average deaths in Israel recently in, is less than two COVID-19 deaths per day since the last week of May. So while both Israel and United Kingdom foreshadow some optimism for Delta's trajectory, experts say that Israel's outcomes is overwhelmingly more positive. Why? Because of their substantial vaccination rate. So when the first cases of the Delta variant were identified in Israel, about 56% of the population were already fully vaccinated. But in the UK, when the Delta variant surge came about, only 2% of the population was fully vaccinated, only reaching 50% vaccination within the past week. So there is this reason to be moderately hopeful, with the caveat that the recent deaths and hospitalizations have not gone up. Remember, when we talk about risk assessment, it is really dependent on where you live now. In our country, for example, the Philippines, where we don't have that much high vaccination rate yet, then we pretty have to be very careful with the surge of these variants. But if you live in a place with high vaccination rates and you are vaccinated yourself, I'm not overly concerned about you. If you're sitting in an area of the country and less than 35% of the population is vaccinated and you yourself are not vaccinated, then I'm much more concerned. So, and while there is some evidence that the virus may evade natural immunity from previous infections, and there could be slightly lower efficacy of the vaccines, these findings are something to pay attention to, but not something to panic about. While older adults and people with existing health conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, and obesity at higher risk of developing severe illness from COVID-19, remember, younger people, less than 40, can still end up in the hospital. So the rapid but uneven rollout of COVID-19 vaccines all over the world have made one thing very clear, that severe COVID-19 is now largely a disease in the unvaccinated people. So in the US, for example, preliminary data from several states over the last few months suggest that 99.5% of deaths from COVID-19 were in unvaccinated people. And remember, these deaths could have been preventable with a safe COVID-19 vaccine. 
So what is the clinical implication of all of this with regard to Delta variant surge? Remember, the ability of the Delta variant to spread more easily has implications for everyone, regardless of their vaccination status. Because infections and hospitalizations may continue to rise, and it is possible for fully vaccinated people to, to still transmit the virus to others who are unvaccinated. Fully vaccinated people are much less likely to contract an infection, which greatly reduces their ability to transmit the virus. But again, a lot of scientists are still trying to determine exactly how often fully vaccinated people who contract an infection transmit the virus to others. Remember, even if you're fully vaccinated, we continue to be very vigilant because we continue to have what we call as breakthrough infections. Whatever vaccines you got, whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, or Zinovac, breakthrough infections continue to happen, especially with the surge of the Delta variant. So what does Centers for Disease Control in the United States say all about this Delta variant? That at July 8th White House briefing, even with the rapid spread of the Delta variant, you know, CDC continues to recommend that mask recommendations remain unchanged, which means they still continue to insist that if you're fully vaccinated, you have a very high degree of protection, and therefore, you do not need to wear a mask. But for us, where we still have patients, a lot of them who are unvaccinated, I would probably advise that masks will probably continue as an add-on additional level of protection against this possible highly transmissible variant. With so many unknowns, it makes sense to wear face coverings when we are indoors, in public spaces, or outside in crowded areas. Something that I will continue to advise that you do follow. However, everyone has their own personal preferences for increased physical distancing and social interaction which may extend beyond local regulations. Likewise, we are now allowing children to go around in public spaces. Remember, these children remain unvaccinated because as of now, the COVID-19 EUA approval has not been given yet to any vaccines in our country for people below the age of 18. So for these groups of people, therefore, mask wearing, physical distancing, increased ventilation, and other measures will be needed to reduce the risk of coronavirus transmission, especially in schools and in outside public spaces. It's important to remember that while COVID-19 vaccines are highly effective, like all vaccines, they really don't offer 100% complete protection. A lot of patients are questioning me regarding Sinovac's protection against Delta virus. We all know that Sinovac is the dominant vaccine received in our part of the world. And the vaccine, in fact, has become the most used in the world with over 943 million doses delivered worldwide. In fact, by the end of the year, it is estimated that there will be around 2.9 billion doses of this Chinese-developed vaccine made. But while the vaccine has been shown to protect against the disease and hospitalization in clinical and real-world studies around the world, experts are calling for more information on how well Sinovac works against the Delta variant and whether booster shots will be needed to enhance protection. Such questions have come to fore in Indonesia, which has relied largely on Sinovac and in fact, right now is battling its worst surge of COVID-19 cases fueled by this more transmissible Delta variant. In fact, an independent group there tracking virus data has discovered that healthcare workers who have died of COVID-19 since June, with 58 of those deaths having occurred this month. But again, remember, we're just talking about those who died. But there are many healthcare workers who survived the Delta surge and only have mild symptoms. 
So in fact, an Indonesian epidemiologist that's working at the Griffith University in Australia, Dr. Bodiman, who collaborated with Lapore COVID-19, claims that this data gives us the confidence that to a certain degree, Sinovac has effectiveness against this new variant. That is why up to now, Indonesian government continues to recommend their people to get Sinovac. He said that various factors may be implicated into these deaths of these healthcare workers, including one, the lack of proper protective gear, and second, the overall dire situation in Indonesia, which has reported over 25,000 new daily cases in recent days, creating a very high risk situation for the healthcare professionals. Recently, we have seen real world effectiveness results from Chile, published in New England Journal of Medicine, showing that Sinovac vaccine was 66% effective against COVID-19 with 87.5% effectiveness against hospitalization and 86.3% effectiveness at preventing death. But it did not show us any data on how well the vaccine stands against the Delta variant. So lastly, my appeal to everyone is that the best way to protect ourselves from the surge of this variant is simply to vaccinate. Vaccines for me continue to be the single most important factor in our fight against the Delta variant. It is the most important thing for you to do to protect yourself. Like everything in life, there's an ongoing risk assessment. If it's warm and sunny, and you want to enjoy the outdoors and the beach, you definitely want to put a sunscreen. So meaning if you're in a crowded gathering, potentially with unvaccinated people, you therefore need to put your mask on and keep social distancing. And of course, most importantly, this is an appeal. If you are unvaccinated and you are eligible for the vaccine, the best thing for you to do now is to get yourself vaccinated. Again, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.